until I've been out in the sun too, a bit red. Um, I have a couple of packages here. Um, I came across another unit of a particular computer that I um, am a um, very fanatical collector of um, because it's one of the systems I developed my original titles on and I don't have a working one. So, in these two boxes, and they're quite large, are a number of items. Um, and let's go through them together. I haven't looked other than opening the top of the boxes here to save a little bit of time. Um, so I'll change the camera angle so you're looking down on the table and I'll bring out each item on the table as we go. Okay, so first item out is actually one of the most important items. So the was packed very nicely. Lots of bubble wrap and the person did do what I asked which was basically sacrifice a floppy disk to keep the heads steady in transport and shut the door. So without further ado it is an original spec video five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Uh, it actually weighs a fair bit. Um, the cable obviously, sorry, the cable is no good but we can get around that looks like it's been eaten by a mouse or something like that not burnt or anything like that I should be able to make cable it's fairly standard um, just having an interesting look at the floppy it's just uh, something streamlining 3 so it's just a piece of business software or something like that so most important item the actual floppy disk itself weigh a fair bit. Now we have, um, have a Spectre Video power supply, some miscellaneous RF cord, I'll be showing you that. Next, we have a second floppy drive. And this one's cable seems to be intact. No burnt wires and no dings, which is excellent. I mean, really at the end of the day, I can replace cables. I'm just hoping one of the mechanisms work. Just checking the numbers. So that's an SV902. And so is this. I believe they are both double-sided units. I'm going to have to check that. I don't think it says on the bottom. I believe, but look, I'll be happy with single-sided units. I've had no end of trouble of trying to get a working unit of one of these. And, stuck in the bottom of the box. So we'll just cut for a second while I get this out. Right, back again. Sorry about that. Um, so it is a boxed Spectre Video Data Cassette, and it's the original version. I believe I... I'm just trying to think whether I actually have a boxed one of the first model, which is the first model is actually the much more reliable model. Uh, the later model is still okay, um, but this one um, actually seems to have wider heads. Just trying to put a single down. Also, it's not perfect because it's been um, chewed. That's just a bit of polystyrene in the corner. It's obviously a little bit damp in the corner there. So inside, always has pretty good packaging. We have the data cassette. Ah, but the data cassette is actually the newer one. Oh, that's okay. I mean, I have one of the older ones that works fine. So, um, and it's got a copy of Spectron inside. I have a few copies of Spectron, so if anybody needs a copy, there's another one there. I'll obviously check that it works. Check out this says Brigora. It's not too badly discolored. It's not too bad. The cord's a bit hard and got that melty. It's got stuck to the polystone and things like that. We can clean that up. All possible. So, excellent. All right, we'll move on to the second box. We'll just pack this away. Alright, so sorry about another cut again, but inside quite a large wad of um, wrapping is uh, a Model 1 Spect Video Super Expander. That is a bit of discoloration. 
I actually have another one of these and it has a similar discoloration in the same spaces. We have three cards. We've got the floppy disk controller, which is of course one of the most important ones. We have an 80 column card and a Centronics interface. Plus, its switch has not frozen, which is actually pretty good. Um, Alright, well, while it's taped up and it's safe for me to toil it around, so there's a bit of a show up. There's the connector that goes in the back of the computer. Unlike the later Super Expander, which is the one I had originally, um, it doesn't have locking screws, so you do need to be careful how you set it up. Uh, there's the back, it's just slots where stuff can come out of. So what we'll do now is we'll put, leave that that way, I'll find what I did with my knife. Okay, back, found my knife, it was stuck into the box. So, I'm going to clean this anyway. Has stuck to the unit. Clean it up later. That's probably a good thing. They taped up that bit to make sure that it wasn't going to move at all. straight off and inside we have all the bits and pieces which they have nicely padded out. Now inside it just has a power supply here uh, that's pretty much the same as the computer one so you can actually swap those out. He's bundled up the cord inside like so and that just um, sits there it's exactly the same outputs um, and then it has another another basically power supply in there that steps down from there so you just put that there and you've got another thing here to capture the cord and that just sits on the mounts like that and we have our cards now I'm going to take those out and Reseat those. The disc card has to go in this slot. It doesn't matter which slots these other things go in. The cards don't look too bad. Let's take out the 80 column card. So we're going to have a closer look. So that's the card there, and it has a separate, sorry, a separate port there. Uh, it's composite out, um, black and white, and it gives you an 80 column display. Or you can look it up to a green screen. And then you have an edge connector in there. Probably not going to show up that well. And as we've got Centronix for a parallel printer. That's got just a standard Centronix parallel uh, ribbon cable there. And the disc controller has um, two um, sockets on them. Which are the same as um, an IBM PC's and the number of connectors. So that's the floppy controller card. Um, doesn't look too bad. I mean the connectors are a little bit bent out from things being taken on and off. So what I'll do is I'll try the drive with the um, um, with the good cable on the um, interface one. I'll take all the other cards out and only run it with just that as a test. And the edge connector here uh, looks okay. It's got a metal face thing there. And other than that, there's no other logic inside this Super Expander. Uh, my Super Expander has this disc controller built onto a little subboard. Um, and other than really raw disc commands, I can't get anything to happen on that one. So I think actually the something's happened to the ROM that's in that particular thing. Uh, I now have two of these cards now, and another one of these, so hopefully I'll be able to get one of these working and actually read some of my original discs. I just like to get one working. Alright, we have uh, one more thing here, so I'll move this away and we'll flip over to the last item. Okay, so back again, and of course, no surprise whatsoever, 
that the um, computer with the rest of that stuff is actually an original Spectre video and it's a Mark II. Um, it's probably not as white as my Mark II. Um, my Mark II had a bit of its keyboard membrane had torn so I actually switched out the membrane from my Mark I that I have because that's extremely yellow. So this unit's not in too bad condition. I have to wait and see how the keys feel. They can get lots of pressing. We've got a bouncy key there. I'm going to have to wait and see until we get a moment. There's lots of screws to take about that, but other than that, so this is an original Switch video Mark II, so when they um, cut the motherboard down, it's a lot simpler than the Mark I boards, because they were very early on. Um, you have power on off switch and two joystick ports there. You have a cartridge slot there which is about the same size as an Atari 8-bit if you want to get relevance in size. Now being a Mark II it has the screw holes for hard mounting to the second version of the Super Expander which is the one I originally had and over here all they do is open up this plastic a bit more. You have the tape connector, you have an inbuilt modulator in the Mark 1's you just had like an AV um, DIN socket um, and you had to hook up a it came with an external modulator that plugged into that but these ones actually have um, RF out, composite, video and single channel audio and there is your expansion interface just there uh, there's the bottom it's pretty clean on the bottom so it's actually a nice clean unit so this may potentially become a spare because I've got a model I've got every model now so this is more about getting the super expander <clears throat> and potentially I might be able to get the other super expander that's, it, that's the identical model that's working so I may actually have in the end a fully working spare that I might swap with somebody for something at some stage but the primary aim of getting this and getting another one is so that I can actually read my original disc with the software the original versions of my software. I mean, I know I took it and I converted it across to the MSX, and I have just about all of those. Um, I am missing a couple of those, but I've got the disks that I just haven't been able to get back my the original original software that I wrote, and it's particularly personal to me to actually be able to do this. So I'm hoping this is successful. And what I do, my life is particularly chaotic at the moment. And if I record this bit and then hold off until I get a chance to put this together and test it, I'll never get the video out the door. So I'm going to do the sensible thing. And this is part one of the video. And I'm going to stop now, clean up, and edit this and put, upload this. And then I will play with the computer and make a separate video. So, in summary, um, I found another original Spectre video, which is fantastic. With two nice original um, Spectre Video branded drives uh, that look in reasonable condition other than that uh, you know, slightly eaten cable. But the other cable is intact which is good. So I'll try a fire up test after I've tied up this mess, edited this video and uploaded it and then I'll do a part two. So sometime soon I'll come back to you with a part, with a part two. So thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.